I don't want to be responsible for anything anymore. This is like the fifth Fit Bash we've run. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really cool, but it's like I've, I've poured myself into it so many times that there's like nothing left to pour from that <laughs> particular part of my body. My company runs Bitbash. I can't fully step out of that, so I'm trying to figure out how I can still enjoy it. And I think that's not being responsible on the day of. I'm in a unique position where I can't really quit because I still have to pay for everything. And, you know, my co-working space is the staging area, so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm just gonna take a nap on the floor. <laughs> or I'm just gonna compulsively clean. My body is like ready to give out already and we've only been open for two hours. It takes about 50 people to tell me that everything's going well and happy for me to actually understand that people are enjoying themselves and not just placating all of my anxieties. This was a very stressful thing to get done this year. It was a new venue, uh, a lot of uncertainty. We've been doing it for three years now, so we know everything about each other, which is nice and also horrifying. I can't enjoy myself fully, but it's cool that it's happening. I understand that this is important to a lot of people, and I understand that Bitbash is an amazing, amazing festival, uh, but there's so many points of stress. Now, we run Bitbash, and it's, it's really for the players, if you will, the attendees. We're not shilling anything. We're not trying to sell games. It's different from a PAX. I love PAX, don't get me wrong, but that's a trade show, basically, and our festival is a celebration of games, um, and that makes it a lot harder. Chicago doesn't have a lot in terms of networks or partying, whereas GDC has, that's all you do, right? Like you go to sh like San Francisco, you take over the entire city. We knew it was an undertaking, but we didn't plan a festival like this. We said, we have this community here in Chicago, why aren't we having these parties? But ultimately a bunch of us for a very long time from Chicago have been saying, why isn't there a festival in Chicago? And I think PAX for a little while was like, we're gonna maybe do like a Midwest one. And we were like, yeah, do here. And then they did Texas and we're like, fuck you, PAX. Threadless had come to us uh, about a year before and said, hey, we'd love to do like an arcade indie event sometime and say, and show a bunch of Chicago indie games. We said, oh yeah, that'd be cool. A bunch of us went to like a GDC talk about festivals or something. And we came out of it and realized there were like six or seven Chicago people there. And we were like, why don't we have our own? And then someone was like, well, let's just throw our own. And I was like, 
I have a company. We can do that. And I told a number of people, I'm going to send you an email. We're going to get some beers together. Let's all meet in a space. And then Bit Bash kind of happened. Some of my friends who had gotten laid off opened a food truck. And so we called them and said, hi, can you bring food? Ultimately, we came up with like a Chicago approach to it. So while Bit Bash isn't an IndieCade or it isn't a PAX, you know, we found our own little niche. We went around to every arcade in Chicago and like, hey, can we have your killer queen machine? Or hey, we built this cabinet for you. We want it back now. It has this Chicago simplicity to it and a roughness. It blooms and that's when the, uh, the intimidation of what it takes to make something like this happen set in. How was it that first year? It was rough. <laughs> None of us have any event planning experience. We just know that we're passionate about this industry. You know, nobody expected anything and we like blew up and it had like 1,400 people and it was a free event that made a profit. It feels like a lot of these people are our neighbors and we're just getting to meet them for the first time. Now, unfortunately, like all that's expected of us, so it's kind of less exciting to do, and it's starting to turn kind of into a job. But there's nowhere near enough money to pay anyone, so we're uh, we're trying to figure all that out. Uh, and yeah, it's become draining to make such a really amazing thing. It's so hard for me to like step back and realize how cool the thing we do is because I'm on the administrative side, you know, and I'm trying not even to be. I like don't even come to half the meetings, even though I'm right there and they're right there. <laughs> And despite having done this four times previous, we're still not convinced that we know what we're doing. But clearly, you know, everyone's told us they're having a great time. We should probably just take their word for it. I, I, I took on a whole bunch of responsibilities that I never knew I could do and I discovered so much about myself and I think we all have and we, 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 we grew together as a, as a, as a team or a, I don't know, family is the right word, I'm not Vin Diesel. I think everything turned around when I sat down and I talked with some people that I like really respected that came in from out of town and then after that I just danced. I mean, I, I say the same thing every year, and it's that Bit Bash is seven months of work for like half an hour of payoff. We were really worried, like sales went crazy in the last day, and we weren't really looking in the last day because we were busy throwing it, you know? I don't think any of us ever expected it. We were idiots doing a dumb thing, and now we're idiots who are good at a thing. This is the fifth time we've said, and it's dawned on us, this is going really well. And this is the fifth event we've had. <laughs> I, I, I finally feel like I'm in a place where I belong. <laughs>